Good morning everyone, Simone here, and welcome to this video. Today I wanted to talk about Poison Control, a game released for PS4 and Nintendo Switch, originally in Japan in 2020 and then worldwide in 2021, produced by Nihon Hichi and published here in the West by Nintendo America. The game starts with our protagonist, a renameable charter that can either be female or male to desire the player, waking up in a strange psychedelic place, which, spoiler, not really, is hell, only to try to be eaten by a monster that was near him, which, after biting him, transforms itself into a young maiden, where the protagonist turns into a skeleton. After turning back to normal, the protagonist and the young girl now share the same body, becoming soulmates, a term used for describing two souls that share one body. And they end up purifying a bad cell, a little hell formed by the strong negative emotions, also called delusions, of both deaf and alive girls that, other than creating a personal hell, also create monsters called Clasha, such as the one that beat the protagonist at the start of the game. These hells can be cleared by making the bell of the hell come to terms with her own emotions, and that is exactly what the two protagonists do in the first hell. After this, the two of them make their way to a strange bazaar inside hell, where they discover that every 50 years a festival is held during which for every bell's hell is purified, the soulmates who did it gain a silver sticker and with 5 golden ones you can go up to heaven and make a wish become true with the fourth layer effect of being able to descend time and space. Because of this, the girl, whose name is Poisonette, asks the protagonist to help her collect the stickers to obtain that chance and to also understand if there is a way to return to his original world, so the two of them set out to clear as many bell cells as they can when encountering adversaries and having to deal with the various stories that every bell has brought with them. Now, the best way to describe Poison Control's story is by comparing it to one season of a battle shonen anime. This is because, while the synopsis I gave you is the real story of the game, Poison Control is composed of stages, the various bell cells, every one of which has its own story, just like a battle shonen anime. There is a global story that goes on along with the series, but in the meanwhile you have various episodes with a story that starts and concludes in it, and that are never brought up ever again. So, the narrative of this game goes like this. You have an introduction to the Hell's personal story through a radio program called Higan Radio, you go into the required Hell, in where you learn the story of the bell that inhabits it, and whether it is dead or alive, and then you purify it and go on like this. Sometimes you have story dialogues at the start or at the end of the stage, or even during it, if it is a stage that relies on the story, a thing that is especially true for the latest stages in the story. This narrative puts more emphasis on the various Bell's personal problems rather than on the more general plot, which isn't necessarily a bad thing and can't really be classified as bad narrative, the point goes to Oninaki, but it surely can make the player feel like it is playing filler content. That is, if you do not account for the fact that every stage pushes forward the story, because technically after every stage we obtain a sticker, so we kind of go further in with the objective of the story, but those are details. Still, in order for this type of narrative to succeed, the best stories have to be interesting, so how do we do? Eh, they're okay. To be honest, they are real a mixed bag, because some are good, some are mediocre, and some it just seems like they had finished ideas. We go from a girl that used desserts as a way to cope with being rejected by her love interest for which she put herself on a diet, to a girl who wants to burn everything around her with a lighter, to WHAT THE FUCK IS THIS? If these stories catch your interest, then you are in for a ride, but if they do not really make you care for them in the slightest, then you will probably find them boring and you will probably also be annoyed by the progression of the game. Speaking of the main story, it is honestly kind of simple and it is overshadowed for the first half of the game by the bad stories, but then it starts picking up and it becomes sort of interesting towards the end of the game when more things start to be explained and we get to know some charter's backgrounds. Still, it really is a big story and it is honestly kind of predictable in some instances. The game presents two normal endings and a special ending, which concludes the story in a good way and are real enjoyable. So, yeah, the story can somewhat succeed in keeping the player entertained, but it is not of the highest quality possible. The dialogues are filled with comedy. However, it is really a or miss, with a lot of misses on some hits, but the time it hits, uh, it is surely funny, you can see that they at least try to come up with something that could be enjoyed. However, as always, there is the underlying fact that comedy is at least objective, so my opinion on the matter can be greatly different from the one of another person that played this game. Also, I think the writers of this game knew their target audience, because some of the stories contain citations to some anime-related media or to more culture stuff, let's say it like that. As for the charters, they are okay. They surely aren't the best written charters in the history of best written charters, but they work. Probably the major problem is that many of them receive a real characterization at the end of the game, with the last missions, but when they receive a bit of history, they become a sort of sense charters with a motivation for the actions that is more deep than because I want to, even though these motivations aren't exactly the best in the world, let's say it like that. Surely the best available charter is Poisonet, which is also the one we see the most, being the protagonist partner, if we know the fact that she constantly wants to eat her player's body. The gameplay of Kaizen Control is a mixture of TPS, a little bit of puzzle, and visual novel slash date in some aspects, but principally Poison Control is a third person shooter. The player normally moves on a little map with all the available stages on it, from which it is possible to select the one you want to play. 
The game starts off as a visual novel with some dialogues, when the player is thrown into the bell cell, normally with an objective in the top right corner to fulfill in order to clear the hell, such as putting a determined percentage of poison Mars or eliminating a total number of specific enemies, but sometimes there won't be an objective and it will appear only later on in the stage. The gameplay in the else divides itself into two parts, the shooting part, where the player will shoot clashes with our protagonist, and one where it will purge poison Mars with Poisonet. It is possible to switch between the two charges whenever the player wants, but Poisonet has a time limit that affects her mobility and speed, and after which she returns in the player's body, and the control reverts back to the protagonist. Plus, if she takes damage, then the player takes damage, and if she takes too much damage, she will immediately return and the player will revert to the control of the protagonist. However, what does it mean, Purge Poison Mars? You see, the dungeons of these games are filled with Poison Mars of three different types, pink, red and violet. All of these Mars cause damage to the protagonist when involves on them and, as I said before, have to be purged to complete some stages. The pink ones are the least dangerous, the red ones are more harmful Mars and the blue ones are Poison Mars that regenerate with time and can never be purged forever, just temporarily. Plus, they also serve as a way to earn money and restore both ammunitions and health. In fact, with every Poison Mars purge, the protagonist recovers a small percentage of HP and with every purification there is the possibility of obtaining some money, so their elimination is useful. That's where Poison Night comes in. In their mode, the player will walk on these Poison Mars to make them disappear, easy as that. The shooting part is a game that feels really clunky because of the aim system, which isn't fluid, especially if you play with the aim assist set to off, in that case, good luck hitting some enemies that constantly move. However, the game offers an aim assist option, which has three settings. Off, little and strong, with the last one being a sort of aimbot, at least for the first shot, for the other ones you have to aim. This is a nice feature that goes countering a problem the game has, but at the same time it just highlights that that was the only solution they found to resolve it. Talking about the weapons, or the poisons, as they are called in this game, they are similar to normal weapons, or at least some of them, and in general the gameplay plays ok, but it is honestly nothing egregious. Speaking of enemies, they aren't that many and have two versions, they are a normal one and a bigger one with more HP, that's all. Each weapon has its own range and number of ammo, and they are reloaded by simply waiting a bit of time or by purifying poison mars, as this is what produces the bullets they use. At the start of the game you can bring with you choke poisons and a delusion, weapons that can be found in the dungeons, but this number can be changed to 3 by leveling up certain stats. The puzzle part consists of little things you have to do in order to obtain poison gems, the only collectible in this game and the only way to get access to new equipment. Each bell cell has 3 gems that you can find even in subsequent rounds of the stage, and when you find all of them, you get access to an equipment piece specific to the Bell of the Tell, which uh, can be a poison, an antidote or a catalyst, with these last two being nothing more than pieces of equipment that improve some stats or characteristics, like the protagonist's defense or an increase in the size of your weapons magazine. They aren't that hard to obtain, especially if you investigate every level from hand to toes, but sometimes they can be quite tricky to obtain, making it effectively a sort of puzzle section. As for the distinct part of the game, it consists of these events called Heart to Heart that can occur once or more inside the dungeon, and that consists of a conversation between the protagonist and Poisonet, and whose answers raise one between five of the protagonist's stats. These are synergy, empathy, insight, toxicity, and trust, and every one of these makes the player acquire a skill when it arrives at a certain level. As for the difficulty, this game is absolutely easy. However, the enemy is it hard. At the start, it isn't really a problem, but from a certain point onward, if you don't learn how to avoid being hit, which, however, isn't really that difficult, you will be killed several times. Still, the game has a system of automatic revival that works like the bottle reloading. On the bottom right part of the screen, you can find three butterflies that represent how many revives you have left, and these can be replenished by purging poison mars, which is a useful feature as a little gangbang of enemies can end at least with one short death, and because of this, the auto revive feature is useful gameplay wise. After saying all of this, however, I have to make a consideration. The gameplay is repetitive. Because you will find yourself shooting things, purging Mars, shooting things, purging Mars, oh, what gem, shooting things, purging Mars, and so on. Still, I have to say that it never really got boring. In fact, it is highly repetitive, but that can change from person to person, so be warned. Moreover, apart from the stages, there is literally nothing else to do. If you have missed a gem, you can go back and try to find it, but apart from that, the only thing you can do are replaying stages you have already played or go forward with the story. There is no other activity apart from this. Following this, the replayability of this title is approximately to zero. Sure, after you watch an ending you can go back and obtain the others, but you can replay whatever stage you want, whenever you want, even after you have finished the story, so there is no real reason to replay the game at all. If not just to replay it from the start for the sake of it without all the things unlocked. As for its longevity, I needed approximately 13 hours to finish it and another 2 to obtain the platinum, so you will have probably 15-20 hours of content, depending also on how many times you'll die and how much time you will need to collect everything you want. The short duration also helps the gameplay a lot, because I'm sure that if the game was longer, it would have started to bore me and I would have only wanted for the game to end. 
Instead, as I've already said, while being repetitive, it never really bored me, so that is a choice that makes the game better in my opinion. Okay, I can only say a thing about the graphics of this game. It just seems like a project coming straight out from Unity. I'm kinda sure that they hadn't done much budget apparent in this game because the graphics show it. It just gives any vibes no matter how you look at it. Still, I don't think it is that bad. Sure, it's basic, if not to say mediocre, especially in the dungeons and in environments in general, with a supper and repetitive game design. The master design and models look okay, as well the protagonist are present at once. However, the flashy colors such as the various shades of pink and purple bring predominantly in this game just make it stand out and give it personality, which I think kind of shows in the GUI. The shooting one is particular and the post screen on the map is top notch. The character design is also good and the various CGs that can be seen in bell cells are okay. However, a little thing I really appreciated is that every bell has other than a name also a portrait, which shows that they cared at least a bit. Also, I am quite sure that the name of the bells in kanji contains some wordplays in Japanese that are related to what happens in various else, but I am not sure about this and it's just an hypothesis and nothing more. However, this game has some technical problems, especially in the late levels. Sometimes the frame drops, especially in the last level where there are a lot of enemies and a lot of poison mars. Then there are problems such as the colors that change from a shade to another just because they want to, only to return to what they previously were in a matter of minutes, and moments in which the screen just becomes of a unified color for a second before returning to normal. However, these problems can be due to the fact that they play this game on a standard PS4, so probably on a PS4 Pro or on a PS5 it won't give any of these problems, but I cannot say that for sure as I hadn't the opportunity to test it. The same goes for the Nintendo Switch, I hadn't the opportunity to test it, uh, this review is entirely on the PS4 version of this game, so I cannot say if that version of the game actually has problems, uh, yes or no. The music in this game was okay, I enjoyed it. It sets the atmosphere of the game, of Lamas Devs and Hell where there are not many things to do, and also the various stages. Still, this doesn't mean that they always choose the best song to play in the right situation. Quite the contrary, actually, especially in some of the final scenes. This game also comes with a Japanese voiceover that I think is okay. It surely is Japanese and it's surely a voiceover. I just know that they find it okay and nothing else. Poison Control is surely not one of the best games out there, nor it is one of the worst video games you will ever see in your life. While having interesting ideas, it ends up pretty to its own flaws, from the repetitive gameplay to the mediocre graphics. Sure, it isn't for everyone, but it remains a somewhat pleasant ride that can entertain the right type of player, while it can easily be source of boredom for the wrong one. Still, it lingers in a limbo zone where you can't say whether a game is good or bad and ends up being labeled as mediocre, and it is the player's task deciding which of the three categories it should fall in. Because of this, it is hard for me to actually find a target to which to recommend this game to. So, the only thing I can say to you is uh, go check some footage of the game and then decide whether you find it fascinating slash something you could enjoy or not. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for arriving here. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more, you already know what to do. And uh, I don't have anything else to say, so this is all for Singwani, and I'll see you guys in my next video.